this video we're going to define vector spaces. So V here, that's going to be our vector space. This is a set. F is going to be what's called a field. So for our purposes, um, this is either the real numbers or the complex numbers. So if you like, you can just think of it as the real numbers every single time. And we'll say V is a vector space. over F. So it's a vector space over a field. So over F. If there are two operations associated with V. So if there are two operations, one uh, is called addition or vector addition. So I'll just say addition. And the other is called um, multiplication or scalar multiplication. I'll emphasize scalar. Right, there is no vector multiplication. So V is a vector space over a field F if there are two operations, uh, addition and scalar multiplication, which satisfy the following uh, axioms. These are called the axioms of uh, a vector space. So the following axioms. So I'll give them names. So I'll, I'll just number them. So one, vector space axiom one. Um, the first one is that um, the addition, the vector addition is commutative. So for all vectors, this means for all, for all x, y, and v, we have that the addition is commutative. So x plus y is equal to the vector y plus x. So you have uh, commutivity of addition. That's what that property is called. Two, um, you have associativity. So for all vectors x, y, and z in our set, if you take the vector um, x plus y, and you add it to the vector z, this is equal to the vector x plus the vector uh, y plus z. And you know, I was just thinking, um, drawing these little arrows is really tedious. You know, you, you can omit um, the arrows if you like uh, when it's understood that they are vectors. Um, so we have commutivity, associativity, and the third one is the existence of what's called the zero vector. So I'll write it like this, there exists, that symbol means there exists, an element that we denote by zero in V. It's a special element of V such that for all X in V, if you take X and add it to this special vector, which we call the zero vector, um, you get X. And it goes the other way as well which doesn't need to be really stated because we have commutivity. So this is kind of a, of a point in passing. Like this, this, this will follow from the first axiom, right? X plus zero is X. Oh, but it's commutative. So zero plus X is also X. So not really necessary to write that other piece. Four, four, for every X in V, there exists another vector this is called the inverse, the additive inverse of x. There exists a y in v such that uh, x plus y is equal to the zero vector. And again, this also means y plus x is equal to the zero vector, but we have commutivity, so uh, it's not necessary. But I'll write it here just for clarity, and y plus x is equal to the zero vector. Uh, five. By the way, um, this vector here, we'll learn later, is really just negative x. So it's x plus negative x, whatever that means. It's just negative 1 times the vector x, and that gives you the 0 vector. That should make sense from algebra, right? x plus negative x is 0. 5. Uh, for all x and v, so for every vector in your vector space, uh, if you take 1, 1 times x is equal to x. 
And one is uh, the number one, or rather, more precisely, what's called the multiplicative identity from our field. So for our purposes, it'll just be the number one, right? Like one, the number one we all know uh, from, from math. Six. Six. For every two scalars in our field, so for all a, b, and f, and again, you can think of f as the real numbers, and for all vectors x in our set v, we have um, a, b times the vector x is equal to a times the vector bx. All right, so this is true for all a, b in our field and for all x in our vector space. Almost done. Seven. There's eight vector space axioms, so that's quite a few. Um, for all elements a in our field and for all x, y in our vector space, we have a times x plus y equals ax plus ay. So we have distributiv distributivity and that's in that regard. And then 8 is another one of our uh, distributive axioms. Um, for all a, b in our field f, this is the last one, and for all x and v, so for all vectors x and v, uh, we have a plus b times the vector x, and that's equal to ax plus bx. So if you have a set v uh, that satisfies all of these conditions, uh, we have uh, a vector space. So it's one huge definition, right? One huge definition. If you know, if you know anything about group theory, um, a vector space um, is basically an abelian group under addition, and then it has this extra operation of scalar multiplication, right? So if you know about modules, uh, a vector space uh, is a module over a field, right? Instead of an R module, it's an F module, where F is a field. But if you don't know that, uh, this definition is good enough, and it's pretty good. Um, let's look at some simple examples of vector spaces. So we can take V uh, to be Rn. So this is the set of all n tuples. Um, you can think of it as ordered and ordered n tuples or vectors, right? So um, the elements of V look like this: x1 dot 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 xn. By the way, the elements of V are called vectors, so they don't necessarily have to be vectors like this, like the ones we know from from basic math. Um, here, our field F could be just the real numbers. Another example, another example, a little more abstract, um, would be um, the set of all uh, matrices. You can just do two by two matrices, uh, or you could do m by n. But if you look at all matrices of the form like this, we can call V. We can call it m sub two of R. So this would be all two by two matrices with entries from the real numbers. And here, our field would be the set of all real numbers. This is also a vector space, so all the elements of M uh, look like this. They're all two by two matrices. You can add them up just like you add up matrices, and you can do scalar multiplication the same way. Another example, a, a little more abstract, is you can look at all functions. Let's call it um, fancy F. Oh, that's fun. Uh, from S uh, to F. And this is the set of all functions, so all the elements of fancy F our functions uh, from S into a field F, right? So, and if you take two functions in in this um, in this vector space, we'll call this V, and here um, our field will just be F. We'll leave it abstract. Um, the way you add functions is that you take two vectors and you add them. So F plus G uh, is a new vector, and how do you define it? Well, you say F plus G of an element X. And s, this is equal to f of x plus g of x. So for a given x, so for x and s, we define the addition uh, this way. And if this is true for all x and s, uh, that's how you define the sum of f plus g. So f plus g is another function. So f plus g is a function also from s to f, and that's a member of fancy f. So. Uh, and then you define scalar multiplication uh, in a similar way, right? You have uh, given given C and F, 
and uh, f in fancy f, uh, we define a new function called cf, which is also a function from s to capital F. And it's defined as follows. You take cf of x, and that's c times f of x. And of course, that's true for, for each x in s. So you have two operations, right? You have the vector addition operation, and you have the scalar multiplication operation. And under those two operations, the set of all functions from s to f is also a vector space. So normally you're used to looking at vectors. That's why I kind of glossed over those other examples. But this is a little, a little more abstract. So you can look at the vector space of all functions, right? So a little more uh, interesting uh, than usual. And there's other vector spaces, but I just realized this video is over 10 minutes. So I'll stop it there. Uh, and um, I hope this video has made some sense.